First of all, a huge thanks to Wisp for supporting this channel via Patreon. It's just so appreciated. All right, now here comes the video. Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah. So here's a little Hollow Knight character I created in Photoshop. He can move left, right, and jump. But things feel limp, lifeless, and just not very interesting. As a player, I wouldn't be excited moving this character around. It wouldn't feel good. And this is something we must fix at all cost. How can we make this character just fun and enjoyable to move and control, because obviously an enormous amount of time in the game world will be spent controlling this character, so if he doesn't feel good to control, chances are high the whole game will feel limp and tedious. And so in this video we'll see how to turn an okay character to a great one using particle effects, sounds, animations and a bit of easy C sharp. Note that all I'm about to say applies for any art style, whether you're making something detailed and painterly or blocky and simple. These following tips will make your game and character feel so much better. So first things first, your player character needs responsive controls. When the player hits space to jump, he expects the character on screen to immediately jump. If not, things will feel laggy and just pretty unresponsive and frustrating. This is especially important if you're making an action platformer for a game that requires quick, sharp reflexes. So avoid putting too much anticipation to your animations. For the jump animation, get the character immediately leaping in the air. Don't spend dozens of frames getting the character squashing and crouching before actually leaving the ground. In an animated film that would be great, but in a game it will just feel sloppy. Remember, form follows function. So once your character can actually move around the environment and feels responsive to the player, chances are very high he still won't feel very interesting to play with. So let's fix that. A cool and simple way to add an extra layer of life to your character is by making a land animation. So instead of your player just jumping in the air, and then land on the ground as if nothing ever happens, make him squash slightly due to the impact. To do so, make a new animation called land, I'll add a few frames which get my character squashing a little, and then heading over to my animator window. Instead of immediately going from my jump animation to my idle or run state, I'll make a transition going from jump to land, and only then move on to idle or run. This very short land animation will really make a big difference to how your character feels. Okay, now Next up, particles. When the character hits the ground after a jump, there should be a puff of dust or dirt spawning by his feet. Or if he's jumping in a puddle of water, instantiate some little droplets. This will really give the player the feeling that he's interacting with the game world, that his character has an impact on it. So once you've made your little particle effects, turn it into a prefab and then inside your player script, you can check when the player is on the ground and if he is, instantiate that puff of dust. However, we don't want dust spawning whenever the character is on the ground, but only when he lands on it after a jump. So I'll make a new private bool variable called spawn dust and then make an if statement inside this one, checking whether spawn dust is equal to true. If it is, only then will I spawn my particles, and then set spawn dust equal to false. This way, dust won't continuously spawn because this if statement will no longer return true. However, when the player leaves the ground, then I'll set spawn dust back equal to true. This way, when he lands once again, more particles will instantiate themselves. And now you can see that cool result. It's also a good idea idea to spawn particles when the player leaves the grounds. It makes his jump feel more juicy and impactful. So I'll also instantiate particles when the player hits space to jump and is on the ground. Awesome. You can take this a step further by getting the player to leave a trail of particles behind him whenever he moves. I usually make this effect very subtle but again, it can make a big difference to your creation's overall appeal. To achieve this via code, simply spawn every 0.1 or 0.2 seconds and effect by the character's feet. Remember that you can decrease a value in C sharp using minus equals time dot delta time. For performance reasons, make sure to add a little script to your effects 
destroying them after say 5 seconds. This way your scene doesn't get bogged down by now useless particle effects. Cool, let's continue making this character feel awesome. We can do so by getting the grass, flowers and leaves move a little whenever the player collides with them. This will really get the player immersed, feeling as if his character is integrated with the rest of the world. And don't worry, a single scene can handle hundreds of colliders without really hurting your game's performance. So first things first, I'll grab a grass tuft, make a little idle animation as well as a move animation, which we'll see it quickly rotates back and forth as if disturbed by some moving object. I can now add that animator controller to all my other grass tufts and flowers. I'll also add a 2D box collider to them as well as a new C Sharp script that I'll call Grass and that'll open up inside of Visual Studio. Here I can make a new void on trigger enter 2D function with a 2D collider parameter called Other and if what I've collided with has the player tag then I'll play my move animation using the set trigger function. Make sure the player character has the player tag and a 2D collider and rigid body or collisions won't be detected. And despite the character's controls or animations not changing, the fact that he has more impact on the environment makes moving him around that much more fun and pleasing to the eye. Alright, here comes another cool trick. Add a tiny bit of screen shake whenever the player lands on the ground after a jump. This will really complement the puff of dust and give real weight to the character. For a lot more on screen shake, check out my whole video on the topic. But in short, I simply animate my camera's position, rotation and size to get things shaky and cool. For when the character lands, I basically get my camera size decreasing ever so slightly. In other words, my camera zooms in just a tad and then goes back to normal. And again, simply use the set trigger function to play that animation at the right time, which in my case is at the same moment as when I spawn the dust particles by the the player's feet. Our whole scene is really coming to life now, but it still doesn't feel right. That's because we lack sound. First things first, adding a landing sound will again make the character feel even more part of the world. So I'll add an audio source component to the player and then using a software like Audacity, I'll quickly make a little thud sound by hitting my desk with the palm of my hands. And once I'm happy with the results, I'll export it into Unity and in my player script, make two variables, one of type audio source called source, the other of type audio clip called landing sound for example. In my start function, I'll grab a reference to the audio source component attached to my character. And then in the same spot as where I spawn my dust particle and get the screen shaking, I'll set my source's audio clip equal to the landing sounds and then play that landing sound. I'll make sure to drag and drop that sound inside the inspector, hit play, and wow, that feels really nice. You can of course go quite crazy with sound effects, adding a footstep sound whenever the character runs left or right, a jump sound when he, well, jumps, even get the leaves rustling under his feet. All these little details will really make a huge difference to how your game feels and how immersed and happy your player will be. My advice is to add these little details pretty fast in development. Because your character feels so much better to control, you'll be a lot more motivated to keep working on your game. You don't need to straight away add hundreds of little details, but just a few key ones like a land animation, some screen shake and a puff of dust will really get your project feeling cool and exciting. Alright, and that marks the end of this video. If you enjoyed it and found it helpful, it would be so appreciated if you could hit the like and subscribe buttons. Supporting me financially via Patreon like these top supporters would also be absolutely wonderful. Alright, thanks so much for watching. Cheers!